Well, good morning, everyone. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I think everyone assembled knows uh, that over the, the last several years, we have made significant investments in making our roads and sidewalks safer. And there is a lot to keep up with. Five years ago, who know we'd be planning for things like dockless scooters and so many modes of transportation that people are using to get all around the District of Columbia and indeed all around our, our region. So there are a lot of moving pieces. Uh, we continue our focus on making sure we're fixing potholes and alleys and bike lanes and bucks lanes and making all of our intersections safer. Uh, and with that, uh, we have a long, long discuss project uh, here on 16th Street uh, at our circle. Don't laugh. <laughs> There are very, this may be the last one, Council Member Todd, of uh, uh, projects we, we started talking about a long, long time ago. Um, but with Council Member Todd's uh, work uh, and his cooperation with our friends in Montgomery County and the state of Maryland, uh, with our incredible team at DDOT, today we are here to talk about a joint project that includes upgrades that residents have requested for a long time. Now, sometimes uh, Jeff will appreciate this. Uh, we discuss projects that there's a general consensus that there is a problem. And sometimes we talk about one that we there is no doubt that there is a problem uh, because of the number of accidents and crashes that we've had around this intersection on both sides of the line. We know that this is a problem that we need to get solved. I am very grateful to all of the neighbors from the Civic League of North Portal Estates. Please give them a big round of applause. From A and C 4A, give A and C 4A a round of applause especially our Commissioner Phyllis Green. Thank you, Phyllis, for your leadership on this project uh, as well. Uh, and you're going to be hearing from, again, our friends from uh, Montgomery County, Tom Hucker uh, from the Montgomery County Council and Evan Glass as well. But before we do that, I want to introduce with all of my appreciation and admiration uh, for helping to get this over the line, Council Member Brandon Todd. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Thank you Mayor Bowser. Good morning, everyone. Well, this is a really, really exciting day. Uh, for the 16th and North Portal Drive Circle. Uh, we've been working on this, as the mayor said, before I was the Ward 4 Council member. Uh, and certainly one of the first things uh, I did when I got elected uh, in May of 2015 was I sat down with Mayor Bowser and her transportation team uh, to chart a path forward uh, to where we are today. Uh, subsequently, I pulled a meeting together with uh, friend, uh, neighbors from the Civic League of North Portal Estates, uh, my good friend Tom Hucker in Montgomery County, uh, and all of the people that would help us uh, move the ball forward. And I'm just really so thrilled I could probably cry, actually, because uh, this was a project that had so many moving parts uh, and that it's been a challenge uh, for so long uh, for this community. And we could not have done this without uh, the Civic League of North Portal Estates support, uh, their president, Michael Benjamin, their Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and I see a few members, Jim Edmonds, Sharon Pugh, uh, and a number of other folks who have uh, sat in community meetings for hours uh, talking about uh, how we can coordinate with uh, Montgomery County and the state highway officials uh, and the government of the District of Columbia to pull this over the line. I would also like to thank uh, Commissioner Phyllis Caudle Green, who represents uh, North Portal and Colonial Village uh, on the ANC. Uh, and thank you to Jeff Marushi and, uh, and Everett Lott at DDOT, who have really been laser focused on uh, making sure that the MOU was signed, making sure that we'll probably have about 40 
new signals at this intersection uh, so that it is predictable for vehicles, that it is safe for cyclists, safe for pedestrians uh, and everyone involved. And we just could not be more thrilled uh, and more pleased uh, to be here today to break ground uh, and then next year uh, to cut the ribbon and celebrate this milestone. I would also like to acknowledge Evan Glass, at-large council member um, in Montgomery County. But again, uh, kudos to the Civic League of North Portal Estates, the Shepherd Park Citizens Association, uh, and everyone who helped us get uh, to today. Congratulations, everybody. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Hey, congratulations, and now it brings me uh, great pleasure to introduce our Council Member Hucker, who is Council Member Todd's counterpart on the Montgomery County um, side. And I know that we have needed everybody's good work uh, to get Maryland State Highway, DDOT, and everybody involved uh, to move forward. So, Councilmember Hucker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, and I, I thank you so much, first, for your leadership uh, on this. Going back to Councilwoman Bowser, I know, was, was fighting for this. When, when uh, Councilmember Todd first reached out to me about this project, I was a brand new member of the Montgomery County Council. And, I had driven it and biked it many times, but never, it wasn't my problem yet. And now I'm the vice president and the transportation chair, so now it's my problem. So I'm so glad that they've uh, uh, shown so much leadership at stepping up to fix it. Um, there's three reasons I'm really excited about this project um, and grateful for their leadership as well as Dr. Maruthian. Um, First, this project is going to make our whole community a lot safer. Both D.C. and Montgomery County have made ambitious commitments to Vision Zero, to getting to zero pedestrian and, and traffic um, fatalities and serious injuries by 2030. That, we're a long way from that. In Montgomery County, we've had three fatalities already in January. In, in, in D.C., we've had some as well. Um, every day, there's too many tragic collisions. And we are doing everything that we're, we can on the three E's of traffic safety. We're educating our, our, our pedestrians and our drivers. We're enforcing the law, and we need to enforce the law even more. But the expensive E, the one that takes the most time and costs the most money, is re-engineering our built environment. In this intersection, I imagine it was built in the 40s, 40s or 50s, with an emphasis on getting cars as quickly as possible uh, far away. And, and now we have different priorities, and we want to put safety at the top of the list. So re-engineering this intersection by aligning the, the crosswalks, adding signalization, um, adding LED lighting to make it a lot safer is going to improve the lives of everybody in this whole area and help us reach that safety goal. Second, it's going to help people ride transit, which is important to D.C. and to Montgomery County. We have we got to keep Metro succeeding. The ridership is up and we want to keep it that way. We're going to have a purple line for you all to ride really soon to get you over to Bethesda and Van Ness and DuPont Circle and the western branch of the red line or to get, your, get you over to the University of Maryland. We're going to have that online very, very soon. But we have to have a safe environment around here so people feel safe walking and biking to the Silver Spring Transit Station. Right now we don't have that. This project is going to create that. And anytime you're doing a good thing for, the, for our transit ridership, you're helping the environment as well. So I see this project as win, win, win. It's a win for safety, it's a win for transportation, and it's a win for the environment as well. I'm really grateful to the district's leadership on this. Um, and I'm real as much as I love coming to groundbreakings like this, I'm really looking forward to joining you all at the ribbon cutting later on this year. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you. And now I want to bring up an old friend. I don't know how long, but uh, it's great to see you and great to see you in your present capacity. So um, please welcome Council Member Evan Glass. Thank you. A long time coming indeed, Mayor Bowser. And so while Mayor Bowser might have been working on this project when she was the district council member, uh, I first met her nearly 15, 16 years ago when she was an employee of Montgomery County helping to make this community a safe place to live, work, and play. And I've lived in this community for about 20 years. And when I first moved here, I moved right up the block and realized how unsafe this circle was. And I formed a neighborhood association, the South Silver Spring Neighborhood Association, where one of our top priorities was to make sure that the circle of death 
gets fixed so that everybody feels safe driving, commuting, walking, or biking. And this is an effort to help make our joint shared community safer. And it took a long time because when we're dealing with multiple jurisdictions like we are, the District of Columbia, Montgomery County, and the state of Maryland, things take a little time to work themselves out. But with dedicated leadership, I am so proud to be here to make sure that the District of Columbia, residents of Silver Spring, residents of Montgomery County can continue commuting between our jurisdictions in a safe and efficient manner. And that's what this project is going to do. And so I greatly appreciate the leadership of my friends uh, and elected officials from throughout the region because this is what progress is. When we all work together to make our communities safe, we all benefit. So Mayor Bowser, thank you for, for taking the lead and helping push this over the, over the line. And where's Mr. Benjamin from the Civic League? I'm going to put you on the spot, Mr. Benjamin, and ask you to come up uh, and speak for the neighborhood. Thank you. You know, it's always a great thing when change happens. And uh, experiencing 16th Street Circle, oh, by the way, the next thing on our agenda in the Civic League is what are we going to name the circle? Right? We keep calling it the 16th Street Circle. That's not a good name. So we got to think hard about how we're going to rename that particular circle. But I'd like to really thank the mayor for her leadership. Councilmember Todd, I really appreciate his diligence over time to get this done, and of course, the state of Maryland, Montgomery County. I think it's extremely important that we do have the kind of cooperation because this is going to be, I hope, a great, great modification of something that's been very difficult over time. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'd like to just introduce the Infrastructure Committee because they did the hard, hard work. Jim Edmonds is the chair. Jim? Sharon Pugh was the lead. Judy Pons, I don't know if Judy's here. Phil Gates, where's Phil? Behind the camera, okay. <laughs> Pamela Lowe, where's Pam? And Ralph Neal, we know he's down in Florida doing the winter. But again, and thank you very much, and really look forward to all the changes. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So Jeff Marudian is the director of DDOT for the district, and I am just really proud of the work that our team has done doing uh, an incredible number of alleys, streets, lighting, and intersection projects like the one you see here, and of course, sidewalks across the District of Columbia. So with that, I want to ask Jeff to talk about specifically what we're going to see and when we're going to see it. Thank you so much, Mayor Bowser. Let's give another round of applause to our mayor. This project truly would not be happening without her leadership and her prioritizing safety improvement projects such as this one. I also want to thank Councilmember Todd for his incredible leadership and support of this project and so much of the work that we're doing uh, to make our, our intersections like this one safer ac across the city and right here in Ward 4. Let's give a hand for Councilmember Todd as well. And I'd, of course, be remiss if I did not uh, thank, he couldn't be here today, but thank our colleague, uh, Greg Slater, who is now Maryland's Transportation Secretary. When he and I started talking about this project, he was the State Highway Administrator, and I know that he shares our interest in making this intersection safer for everybody. We really appreciate his support and the support of our colleagues in Montgomery County to get this over the finish line. Over the next several months and throughout the duration of this year, we will be working on this circle uh, to signalize those parts of it that are not currently signalized. We'll be adding new crosswalks and we'll be making sure that everybody can access this circle by making it ADA accessible. This is a project that is, as the mayor mentioned, has been a long time coming and we're so pleased to be able to, to deliver this. I wanna thank our team at DDOT who's here, who helped design this project along with JMT Construction who helped get this design uh, to a good place that, that our neighbors in the state of Maryland felt comfortable with us moving forward on it. 
I want to again echo our thanks to the ANC, to the Civic League for their partnership and, and collaboration over the past several years and over the most recent months as we got to this place. Uh, and I want to thank all of you, all of our neighbors who are here, uh, who have endured this uh, this circle for a long time. We know we've got to uh, we've got to make it safer, and we're here today uh, to break that ground. I uh, agree with the council member. I look forward to to being here for for the ribbon cut, cutting as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to our mayor, Mural Bowser. So I'll take a few uh, press questions and any community questions. So I'll start with the press. Yes. I'm Seven. Yep. I just wondered in general, Mayor, are you happy with the progress of Vision Zero so far? And just in context, is this one of the first intersections that's being revamped? I wasn't sure. Or where is it in the history of Vision Zero right now in terms of intersections across the city? Sure. So the question was, are we satisfied with Vision Zero? Uh, and the answer is, we don't want to see anybody die walking, biking, or riding in the car in Washington, D.C. So our goal, like many cities around the country, uh, is to use all of our engineering techniques, education, and enforcement techniques to drive those incidents down. Um, and sadly, like uh, Hucker, like Council Member Hucker said, we've had deaths in the district already in January, uh, and we want to remind people uh, to share the road, be mindful of their speeds. Uh, do not be distracted when driving. Uh, you are driving a in what could be a deadly weapon if not used safely and properly. Uh, and we know when we do all of those things, uh, we will have safer streets. This project um, long precedes our Vision Zero commitment uh, and it really represents a lot of coordination between our DDOT and Maryland State Highway. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, I actually don't have a question, but I'm a retired DC police officer and I was assigned to the fourth district, which is this area. And this spot here, and this is an upgrade. It wasn't like this when I came on the department in 74. They used to have accidents so bad that they would push the Maryland person that may have hit the DC person across the line to the Maryland side. And then when police and the ambulance would come, you would have Montgomery County on one side, DC on the other, Montgomery County uh, ambulance, DC ambulance, and they would discuss who did what? <laughs> and it never worked out. It was just horrible. That new flower thing is something new. But I'm a fourth generation Washingtonian at the fourth district until I retired in 89. But it was horrible. This in DC, this was the most hazardous spot in the world. And then the curbs were not that wide then. They were little curbs. Mm -hmm. It used to be just totally. And I think you all are fantastic. Well, good. Well, thank you for that history. Um, and we're going to continue to work on it uh, to make sure that all of the, the crossings and the con present conflicts are dealt with with signals, uh, that people is clearly marked where people should walk, uh, and it's better lit. Uh, and I couldn't agree with more with the previous comments that it connects our neighborhoods uh, with uh, the Silver Spring Transit Station, which is important. Uh, and it connects to a lot of other things in Montgomery County. That, not that D.C. residents are going to Montgomery County. <laughs> no, no reason. They're connecting to the station to go downtown. I already know that. But wherever you're going, we want you to be safe. Yes, oh, two more questions. Yeah. Go, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia Prather, when is the expected groundbreaking? Um, when exactly um, will people start I mean, I'm seeing I'm sorry, work? ribbon cutting. It started this week and it's going to continue. And when is the expected completion? Uh, throughout this year, I understand. Yvonne. Has any resolution been made regarding the upkeep of the shrubbery, which sometimes hinders visibility, and it, it's overgrown at times, and I'd like to know if that's been worked out between the two jurisdictions. Let me ask Jeff to speak specifically about that. Yes, thank you so much for that important question. We know that there's vegetation in the area that sometimes gets overgrown, and, and we are working to make sure that both on the district side and also on the Maryland side uh, that it is, that it is uh, kept uh, in the way that it should be so that it, it, it makes everybody safe. So we have DGS on ours, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, during the uh, reconstruction, is there going to be a redirection of the traffic? Or any traffic mm -hmm. changes? Good question. Yes, uh, thank you for that question. During construction, our team is going to work uh, very hard to keep uh, to keep it uh, separate lane by lane so that we're not uh, impacting the entirety of the circle so that people can continue to drive, walk, or bike through. Uh, there will be times, as you can see right now, we're currently uh, occupying one lane of traffic. When that area is done, we'll progress to the, the next lane uh, and, and keep those closures moving that way. Uh, we'll continue to keep the community informed through as many, uh, as many channels as we possibly can about the construction schedule. We do expect if everything stays on track, uh, that will be done by the end of this year, uh, most likely sooner than that. Yes. Just a quick question, um, rather detailed, but coming down from east-west, is there any chance there'll be a speed camera to keep, keep those cars at the speed limit? Because that's coming down the hill, people really get up a good head of speed. I think that's a great idea, and I'm happy to ask our police for that. Unlike the district, which has responsibility sort of at the state level and the local level, we're just the local level. This is state highway. We have to ask our police and our state highway, but I think it's a great idea, and I'll request it. Thank you. Yes. Why is the traffic light and the pedestrian light synchronized at the same time? I mean, the pedestrian, it causes more accident than any other. You right behind you, take a look. You got the pedestrian light and the turning signal, they synchronize at the same time. They create more accident than any other. That's something I think we should do something about. Sir, thank you so much for that question. One of the things that we're doing, one of the important components of this project that we're doing is also not only adding new traffic signals, so where you see there are two locations currently, there are no traffic signals, we're adding them there. We're also changing the timing of all the signals as well. Uh, by realigning the crosswalks and aligning the signals with those crosswalks, we're able to, to change the timing uh, so that it's safer and, and a more efficient intersection for everybody. Thank you, everybody.